Mechanically, this Audi is the same as any other race car. The difference is the driver. There is none. The gas, brake, and steering are all being controlled by a computer program designed by Stanford professor Chris Gerdes and his grad students. We want the car capable of executing any maneuver that is physically possible. Therefore, we can get out of harm's way as effectively as possible. Safe distance between cars is maintained by automatic radio control. Now nearly a reality, driverless cars have been the vision of the future for decades. On, on the one hand, it's kind of a great gee whiz technology. Can we do that? I think increasingly though, people are not enjoying driving. I think there's an awful lot of people who would much rather use that time for something else. The technology is not just for concept cars at auto shows. Manufacturers like BMW, Audi, Nissan, even Google have been working on driverless cars for years. What you're likely to see is a car that can take over from you on a highway if you get into a traffic jam situation. So it can keep the spacing from the car in front of you, perhaps change lanes if it needs to, um, keep you within the lane as the traffic starts up and slows down again. And Mr. Gerdes believes that such systems are only the beginning. People are going to want to do things while the car is driving itself. They're, they're going to want to be able to, to do things like sleep, like text, uh, to engage in other activities that, that don't involve driving. That is really the, the next step to get to is that the car has the ability, if there is an emergency situation, to either handle it or to move itself out of harm's way into a safe state. So you can't simply push a button, put it in autonomous mode, and then expect that you can say, hey, we're gonna have a collision in three seconds, driver take over again. Manual over. What do you think you're doing? I'm driving. By hand? Mr. Gerdes is still quick to admit that driverless cars present some complicated safety and legal issues. Driverless cars don't eliminate human error. They shift it. So they shift the error from driving to programming. Uh, and so if you're in a scenario that the programmer has envisioned, has thought of, uh, then the car will likely be safer than the, the humans. But when you get into situations that require human judgment, there are still accidents that the car may have that a human driver wouldn't have had. Sometimes, Mr. Gerties rides inside his self-driving cars as they enter controlled skids and make hairpin turns. I've spent many hours going around the track with the car driving itself, one hand on the big red button, the other one ready to grab the steering wheel. When you know that you and your students programmed the software and, and possibly had just finished those revisions the night before, uh, then it's not a terribly relaxing experience.